Howdy everybody, Argon Matrix here, welcome to episode 127 of The Binding of Isaac After Birth Plus. Had a great run last time, greed mode is done as the loss now. Let's go ahead and move on to greedier mode with Isaac. We're going to go ahead and make the rounds here with everyone except Azazel, because we already did Azazel way back in the past when I didn't realize that uh, greedier mode unlocks do not also unlock greed mode unlocks. That would have saved us a lot of time, but it's okay. C0NZ cons. I don't know how I feel about that. JZWX. What I do know how I feel about it is this tinted rock right here. I'm pretty happy, especially about that. That's like a really, really nice start to things here. Because obviously, ooh, I'm going to re-roll that. Well, I kind of regret it, but I can re-roll it again anyway, so it's not going to be the hugest deal. Um, yeah, I especially appreciate that small rock nice and early here because this is greedier mode. And I need to get reacclimated to greedier mode now that I've been playing just regular greed mode so much. What are the key differences that we need to watch out for here? Obviously, we have 11 waves instead of 10. 12 waves if we go for our deal with the devil, which we often probably will want to. Uh, the more... Sorry, excuse me, not the more. The less money we will actually get, actually. We'll get less money as the waves go on, as so we'll... Even though we were kind of starving for money in the first place in Greed Mode a lot of the time, just being able to barely afford like one item on a lot of floors. Except in the previous video, obviously, where those concerns were largely negated. This guy is... He threw me off, man. So we need to be very frugal with our spending, because we are getting a lot less money. Uh, the waves tend to be harder, from what I have been told. I don't know if that's just anecdotal evidence, or if it's actually true that they're just different waves throughout greedier mode that are designed to be harder. And then obviously, there's also the final boss who is nightmarish at times, but uh, not so super different from regular Ultra Greed as to be like unfathomably unstoppable or anything. Okay, well, I'm having not the greatest time here just because I keep getting hit by champions, and I am a little tempted to go and press that button right now. But I really don't want to because obviously pressing the button would lower the amount of money we get overall. And we're already neutered in that sense just by playing greedier mode on its own. So really would rather not uh, not have to face that. So hopefully I can get through the rest of these waves without too much more trouble. We'll have enough money to check out that treasure room. Reroll the mom's lipstick. Bob's your uncle. We'll be good to go, I hope. What does suck about not really being able to press the button, or not wanting to press the button, is that we're losing out on some reroll potential with uh, with the D6 right now. God damn! Oh, that was a little scary. Just because we can't reroll at every available opportunity without stopping that button. But I digress. We oh, okay. <laughs> Almost just walked right into him. Normally, those guys are like so unpredictable a lot of the time. Yeah, normally we'd be able to afford an item just like right off the bat here, but. Unfortunately, not the case this time. So let's go ahead and first, before anything, check out our item room. See if we would rather reroll that over Mom's lipstick. Although, the amount of items that are below Mom's, mix Mom's lipstick in terms of usability are pretty, uh, pretty low. It's pretty a pretty dwindling list. Go ahead and reroll this. That is totally fine right there. And then we will. Um, can I? What do I want to buy anything out of this? First off, I, I may just want to buy some spirit hearts. I don't know. We'll see. We'll face the music when it comes down to it. I'm going to take this for sure, though, and then fight our bosses. Our first boss wave, anyway. That, too. The timer is also very reduced on uh, on these Greed Mode waves. I don't know if it's reduced on the regular waves, but definitely on the boss waves, because we only got 14 seconds to kill Larry Jr. here, which is still plenty a lot of the time, but like normally on a, on a regular Greed Mode start, you would have 30 seconds, I think, Roughly 30 seconds, I think, to kill the uh, the first boss wave. I'm just walking all into these enemies. It's a good time. Having a good time, having a good time. A weirdly synergistic set of bosses here. In that Larry Jr. is setting all these poops all over the place. Limiting my ability to dodge, but also limiting the, the Gurgling's ability to see me from every single angle. So it's interesting that way. It's, it's created a very dynamic sort of ever-changing boss arena, which I wasn't anticipating. But, you know, there it is. Something you'd never really notice if you were just fighting Larry Jr. and the Gurglings in a different sort of setup. If you're, like, more powerful and you just annihilated them instantly. Whereas here, we're not quite in that setup position just yet. We'll get there, I have faith. But, for now... Do we want to fight for our deal with the Devil? 
I mean, we are in a pretty scary spot HP-wise, but it's not the end of the world. And, I mean, I should probably buy Matchbook, right? Evil Upgrade. Wow! <laughs> I was gonna say Evil Upgrade, get some bombs and a Spirit Heart out of it, but, you know, the game just decided, no, that's not happening today. Fuck you entirely. Wow, well, thanks for that, anyway. Thanks, Larry Jr., for being a team player. Alright, we got Lust and Gemini here, which is a pretty scary combination, because they're both enemies that chase me down fairly quickly. I gotta watch out for those spiders. And I did get a speed downgrade in the form of Small Rock earlier, so gotta watch out for that. Thankfully, Lust was actually much easier to take out than I anticipated. Maybe we just maybe it's because our damage is higher than you would normally expect for this point in the game, like significantly higher. Normally, by this point, you might still well be operating on base damage if you haven't gotten lucky with your uh, items, whereas in this case, we've gotten actually two damage upgrades, which is fine by me, man. Alright, and our deal with the devil is imminent here. What do we got? We got some runes. Okay, could be good. Yara is a great rune. Algis is also a great rune. Oh, God. One, in one ensures survivability, the other ensures being able to buy more stuff on the next floor. I don't know if there's a specific word for that stability um we'll go ahead and take yara i think just because it's a little more viable and if we happen to come across a blank card i mean blank card on either of those would actually be phenomenal i don't know if i'd necessarily want to give up the d6 for it because the d6 is very valuable but regardless let's go ahead and move on could have gone to the curse room there i opted not to because hp is pretty precious more so on greedier mode than on regular greed mode now curse the blind i really do not like Blood Clot's okay, though. I do not like it, because obviously in, greedy, in Greed Mode and Greedier Mode, that's uh, kind of a kick in the head. So I don't know if I even really want to buy anything on this floor, because we have no like recourse to to take if it's like a bad item or something. Like, we don't want to waste what little money we do have on a random gamble, right? Hi, Manu. She's like... I guess, I don't know, I haven't paid that much attention to her today because I just got home and then went right to recording, so... Oh, she wandered away. <laughs> Never mind. That's okay, though. She'll be back. They always come back. Damn cats, man. Yeah, we don't want to waste the limited money that we do have on random chance re-rolls, you know? Not re-rolls, but item pickups, I guess. Don't want to gamble it all away is what I'm saying. So what we'll probably do is we'll leave the money on the ground for this uh, for this floor, all of it ideally. Although that does limit our dodging space somewhat, it's uh, worth it in the end because I want to save up as much money as possible, then Yara it, and then we'll be in a pretty decent spot for the next floor. I do want to double check if there's like any keys or anything for sale in that shop up there though. Just in case, because you always want to pick up the keys when they're for sale. Save two cents wherever you can, right? Like I said, I gotta be frugal. Gotta be frugal Luther if we want to uh, want to have the best shot at success on these runs. Wow, that was the shot of the century from the nub there. Play of the game, man. Play of the game. I don't. I don't very. I, I don't know if I've ever gotten a play of the game in any game that I've ever played. Granted, very few games that I play on the regular have play of the game, like, mechanics. The only one that I play, even semi-regularly, and even this is debatable, is Overwatch. And I don't think I'm nearly good enough at that game to ever earn that sort of accolade. I maybe put myself down a little bit too much. I'm sure I could do it if I applied myself, but you know what? I may... Mm, I may regret this, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy this heart. Oh, fuck, fuck me, dude. I just... <laughs> there goes, like, four, basically, like, eight cents down the drain for our Yara play. Do we want to save our Yara play for the next floor now, after that flow-up? I don't think so. I think it's still... It's still gonna be a good amount of money, even if we don't, uh, don't get the maximum possible benefit out of it. All right, so we can Yara now, actually, because we're not gonna get any more money from the next wave, since it's a deal with the Devil Wave. So now we're actually free to dodge into this space if we need to, which we clearly do, seeing as Blighted Ovum plus Haunt is actually a pretty dastardly combination. Thank god that guy died pretty quick. And thank god it's also uh, Black Haunt here, who doesn't fire Brimstone lasers. 
Granted, the spiders can be a little gnarly from time to time, but we have enough damage to one-shot them, so it's not the end of the world by any stretch. And we'll be good here. We'll actually have enough money to buy two items and a key on the next floor. Which is pretty solid. It's a pretty solid amount of money to be at. Let's see here. Yeah, we got up to like 40 cents. Close to 40 cents anyway. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, check our deal with the devil fight. It's triple sloth. Not the worst in the world, honestly. Like the last boss wave I fought, blighted over him in the haunt. Which granted was two waves, but still. It was a lot worse than this, so I should be able to handle this. Maybe not perfectly, obviously, but, you know, with some degree of competency. Also, no reason to check out that treasure room, because uh, Curse of the Blind, obviously, is a thing, so don't worry about wasting the key on that. Or maybe you should, because it's a free item? I don't know. I may actually do that. I'm, I've kind of convinced myself now. Let's see what we got here. Ooh! We got a two-hard deal. I don't know, man. That's risky. It's risky as hell. Two hard deals are normally pretty good. Let's play with fire a little bit here. Satanic Bible. Okay. Now, do you want to run Satanic Bible or do you want to run D6? All right, Minu. Clearly, you want some sort of... Oh, no. Now she's running away. She doesn't know what she wants today, apparently. <laughs> do you run Satanic Bible or do you run D6? Like, the D6 is very versatile is the thing. But Satanic Bible... I mean, maybe what you do is honestly... Like, I'd like to use the tank Bible a little more. Hello. What was that noise? She's got these weird meows that she gets from time to time when she really wants attention. But apparently she doesn't today. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just, I think, re-roll Satanic Bible here into a better deal with the devil item. Or a different deal with the devil item, at least. Better is debatable in the form of the leech here. And we'll go ahead and buy a key. Yeah, I don't know. That may have been the wrong play in terms of just survivability, but I forsake the D6 a lot more than most people, I think, and that may be... Ooh, Proptosis is amazing. I'm glad we did not pass that one up. And that may be part of my folly in this game, is that I don't give the D6 enough credit, because, I don't know, I so easily replace it, because Satanic Bible is great. Obviously, it makes it much easier for us to survive on this run, but the D6 could do that exact same thing just in a different roundabout way. We may not need as much HP in order to uh, to guarantee survivability. So PJ's there is an interesting upgrade. I think I'm very interested and I'm probably going to take it. Um, the D4 is also interesting, but I think we have enough great, if not good, items on this run. Especially, ooh, is this... I mean, this is going to reduce our range, but it's probably worth it, right? For the tiers upgrade and the splash damage. Yeah, I think that's fine. Especially because Blood Clot helps uh, mitigate that a little bit. We'll check this real quick. Okay. Not my jam, but that's okay because we have PJs waiting in the other room for us. I sort of left it just because I thought uh, I thought it might be useful for its full health potential, but probably not going to need to worry about that so much. And do you take Skinny Odd Mushroom? It is a damage downgrade and a tiers upgrade. We're almost at the tier cap anyway, so I don't think it's super worth it. Let's just go ahead and grab ourselves the PJs here to sort of guarantee more survivability. Probably should actually check the curse room and then pick up PJs, because then I could have made use of the uh, HP regeneration effect of that, but not the worst ever. Not the worst slight I've ever made in this game. That's for goddamn sure. And now we just try and uh, steamroll as best we can. We've got an amazing amount of damage after Proptosis and uh, all these tiers upgrades we just got. So this is going to be not not like the strongest run we've ever seen. I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, in the previous video we saw a much, much stronger version of this. But the odds of attaining that level of strength without, uh, without blank card 2 diamonds rearing his ugly head again is pretty slim, I would say. But you know what? We're on the way. We got some pretty high quality stuff going on here. If that too hard deal on the deal with the devil previously had been a little bit better, like if you know if we've gotten a... Uh, even, even just like a Spirit of the Night or something, might have been in a better spot, but... Had to be Satanic Bible Man, which was not bad, but, you know, not, like, not consistently good for us just because we could keep it for us, for ourselves. Alright, so I did not mean to press that button so immediately, actually, because I wanted to head up into the shop and, uh, and re-roll our stuff with the D6, but it's okay, it's not the end of the world. We'll fight here. Even, like, even if I had gone to rerolls, like, I wouldn't have gotten 
enough charges for a second reroll anyway out of these two bosses. So, okay. Well, that guy snuck right up behind me. And then Infamy kind of saved me there. I'm taking a little bit of dumb damage. Granted. Where I really should not be. Because uh, Loki and Duke of Flies, or the Husk, same difference really. It's not that bad of a boss wave, but there we go. We got that taken care of. Let's head up here. And do you want to save your reroll for this or for the deal with the devil? I mean, at this point, I might as well fight the deal, deal with the devil, see what it is, and maybe reroll it. So I'm feeling confident enough to give away some of my HP here. Certainly not all of it, I would hope, but you know what? I could be pushed in that direction for the right set of items. For now, though, let's just worry about taking out Carrion Queen, if you know what I mean. Carrion Queen. She's a Carrion Queen. Gunpowder, gelatine, dynamite with a laser beam. Guaranteed to eat your flesh. Ooh, anytime. Needs a little bit of retooling on like the middle lines of that song, but you know, I think there's I think there's potential there for uh, for a carrying queen, killer queen uh, parody. Someone with better musical talent than I could probably pull that off. You know, many of you may be even surprised that I know the song Killer Queen at all, but you know, I'm not in completely musically inept, just mostly. Uh, okay, there's a random heart down here. That's what that was. That's why I wasn't ending just yet. What do we got? Okay. So Dark Matter and Sacrificial Dagger are quite good. But is it worth giving up that much HP for it? I think we can do one better. Uh, that's pretty good. The mark is obviously very takeable. And do you take Gimpy as well? I think I will. Because I've been taking... A little bit of damage here and there, not an exorbitant amount or anything. And then I think we just leave the rest of it because we don't have any reroll re machines or anything. And get a move on with our lives. So very, very potent tears right now. Uh, our defenses leave a little bit to be desired, but Gimpy will hopefully help with that a little bit in the near future if we need to. Also, Super Bandage here is a pretty solid upgrade. Like, I don't know if this is necessarily, uh, on its own, going to be enough to beat, uh, Ultra Greed, or Ultra Greedier, Omega Greed, whatever you want to call them. Um, see, now, the habit is interesting. What I think I'm going to go ahead and do instead is buy this key and check our item room. And we got Ghost Baby, which is worth a reroll for sure. Now, do you take the habit? I think you'd probably do, ensure a little bit more... Expediter rerolls. The tower, okay. Well, let's actually just use that in this room, try and get these skulls blown up. Well, that was rude. At least we got the secret room out of it, though. That was a kind of surprising, uh, surprising good thing to happen to us. Bombs are keys, useless. Pheromone is also useless. Good times were had by all. All right. So now, I think there is sort of a, a play you can make here where I can press the button that'll trigger my reroll, and I don't think money is as pertinent to us right now anyway as it was before, so I feel okay about pressing that button. Let's go ahead and reroll this. Lil Chub is probably gonna be worth another reroll, so let's keep on fighting here. I'll probably just fight the rest of the waves now. I'm not gonna worry about maximizing every single reroll, but that seems like a decent opportunity to make that work. And you know, if we get damaged, then it may change my stance on things here. This is the habit is gonna make things go a little bit fast and lose in terms of the rerolls. Gimpy is working out in our favor in terms of its red heart drops anyway. We're getting a lot of half red hearts. That happens so often with Gimpy. It's like like oftentimes you, you see Gimpy and it's like, oh yeah, spear hearts on spawn, and then like it starts starts dropping all these red heart halves, and it's like, okay, yeah, that's the other effect of Gimpy. And it doesn't want to dare let you forget it, just because it's going to spawn like a dozen red hearts on this one room. Of course, now that I said that, it's kind of stopped spawning them, so egg on my face, I guess. There we go. If we could get like a dark bum situation going on, I'd be pretty happy. We'll see what our deal with the devil has in store for us, I suppose. Let's go ahead and reroll little chubby here. Okay, I mean, Nod Leaf. If I had taken Sacrificial Dagger, it actually would have been like amazing. But I think I'm still going to take it anyway. 
just because you never know when we'll get a nice orbital. We could always use it with the leech if we're uh, really in a tight spot, I guess. 9 volt there is probably not, like, worth 15 cents. Like, it's good with the D6, don't get me wrong, but our reroll economy in green mode is a little bit hampered by the wave system. So I don't think it's super relevant to my situation. Especially not now that I have the habit, too. So, my god, that's like triple little Gertie. I'm... <laughs> this is a bad wave, man. Should be. At least one of them should be near death here. I've kind of spread my damage equally between them, which is a pretty not recommendable strategy. But there we go. We managed to get it done. One little dip left up here. One little dip. The Argon Matrix story. Alright, let's go ahead and fight for our deal with the devil. We got double Mr. Fred. There are worse bosses we could be facing right now. But admittedly, they do kind of pose an interesting uh, challenge just in terms of the arena they create. But I seem to have found the sweet spot here where nothing is ever going to hit me, except for that guy, of course. But now that first Mr. Fred is dead. Mr. Fred is dead. And now the second Mr. Fred is dead in the head. He's getting ahead and is dead in the head. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to ape Dr. Seuss or something. That's a term you don't often hear, is the word ape. I mean, you hear it oftentimes in re reference to the actual animal, but, like, in terms of uh, its other uses, i.e. to mimic somebody, or to impersonate, or not impersonate, but, you know, to mimic, I think, is actually a pretty good uh, description of it. Okay, so here, do you take any of this? I don't know if any of it is actually worth it. I wish I had a, had a reroll for this, but no such luck. I mean, tarot cloth is potentially viable if you get like a two of diamonds or something, or any number of cards could actually be very good with that. So I'm going to tempt fate with that one. What card do we get out of it? We got the Devil, which is pretty good. It'll give us a solid damage upgrade, and I'll probably want to save that for the Ultra Greed fight itself. Then we'll buy this HP upgrade because it's on sale, and it seems to make sense. I'm actually also going to buy Mini Mush because the speed and range are pretty effective here. And then I'm going to buy Binky, too. I mean, that's like all our money, I know, and I wish I had enough for the Halo, but it did break our tier cap, which I'm very happy about. So now we have, a, like, a near laminar stream of tiers just by virtue of how big they start. And then we can go ahead and move on here. I was looking for Tinted Rocks there. I don't know why, because I don't have any bombs, obviously, but... All right, moving on to Sheol. This will be our last uh, floor with item rooms, so... Got to make the most of that. Synth oil is totally fine. The damage and range are both appreciated. Not that our range is really hurting too much anymore. It was for a little while there. Now, Moldy Bread and PhD. I'm probably going to be able to only be able to afford one of them. And I'll probably go for Moldy Bread. There's also Charge Baby here, which is interesting. I don't know. I may want to re-roll all of this, honestly. We'll see. For now, let's just go ahead and fight. Also going to have to buy a key to get our, uh, our other item room there, so... Don't forget about that. Don't you forget the gold item room. It could have brimstone or mom's knife. Not that I'd actually really want either of those. I'm having kind of a fun time with these tiers. Also, it cannot have brimstone. It can have mom's knife, I'm pretty sure. But, I've, but no treasure room that I've ever seen contain brimstone. The one theoretically could if you had chaos, but... Even then, I don't think I've ever seen that happen. My god, so many spiders! the downsides of having a massive tier rate is when you fight against those guys. Also, the downside of having, like, massive tiers and a massive tier rate is that, like, oftentimes you occlude your own body, so I have a tough time dodging. Is this just, like, a regular wave that was just big horn? That's so random, dude. He's so random. Alright, let's go ahead and check our, uh, check ourselves before we wreck ourselves first of all and then also check our treasure room we got mom's razor i mean that is something to use with nod leaf i guess but it's not the greatest so let's go and uh we roll into cube meat which is actually a lot better to use with nod leaf if it comes down to that and then i don't know i may just save my money honestly for the next floor we'll see we do need to save some money for our donation obviously at the end that's harder to do in greedier mode than it was in greed mode but I have faith that we will get up to our uh, 999 status eventually on that, just as we will on our regular donation machine. That's another one of the few outlets I still have for unlocks in the main game. 
when I say main game, I mean like hard mode as opposed to greed mode. Alright, so we'll take all this money. Sucks that these red poops are here now, but gotta live with the deals that you're dealt. That's not an expression. <laughs> um, uh, it's tempting. Moldy bread is actually pretty tempting, and I think I'm gonna go for it. The one up would be nice, but I'm not gonna be able to afford it, unfortunately. That is okay. I think that would actually give us uh, give us the fungi transformation, if I remember right, because we got mini mush, we got blue cap earlier, and that would be our third, so. But it's a moot point to discuss. Oh god, there's actually double Forsaken here. I was I was kind of thinking, like, a single Forsaken for the deal with the Devil Wave is a little bit, like, underwhelming, you know? So we got Algies and Ansu's. Okay, so we'll go ahead and use Ansu's. Then we'll take Algies, and because of Terror Cloth, that's going to be a lot more valuable. I know the Devil could be extremely valuable, but we have high damage as it is. So I don't need to worry about that too much. And we'll move on down to our final floor here, and hopefully there won't be too many good items for sale. I say that, like, that sounds kind of contradictory, because, like, you wouldn't you want good items for sale? Uh, oh god, it's blank card, man. That may actually be worth taking. Because what, what use does the D, what do I have for the D6 once we get down to the greedier fight, right? The Omega Greed fight. Whereas with blank card, I can get a little more Alge's action going on if I need to. Which I may need to, given the state of my HP. So I might invest in that and then just try and save the rest, even though it won't be that much. I'll save the rest uh, that I have for the greed donation. Of course, all that entails surviving to the next floor, so let's make that happen before anything else here. I don't think it's going to be a huge concern to survive to the next floor. Admittedly, I am a little bit scared, especially because I can't see my own body half the time, and these spike blocks are psyching me the hell out. Why, are, why am I getting so many, like, random grandfather flies in here? They're not tough enemies. What are they doing here? See, that's a tough enemy. Ragman. Double Ragman. Holy shit. Of course, the black Ragman, I think, is less tanky than regular Ragman, so... Not the worst in the world, but... Oh my god. I'm just getting swamped, dude. It's okay. We're actually in a pretty decent spot just because of a uh, Gimpy, so even though we don't have any more Spirit Hearts, we're getting, uh... Pretty good HP regeneration from that. Dude, these spike blocks are like blocking every single shot though. <laughs> there we go. Finally got rid of those spike blocks. Got them out of the way here. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... I mean, there's there's really no way to use the D6 on this floor without rerolling blank card as well. So let's just take blank card for now. And then... We'll save up the rest of our money, I guess. We might only get up to, like, 15 cents to donate or something, and that may be lessened by the end of the Ultra Greed fight itself. We'll see how it goes, though. First, let's deal with the Bloat and Mask of Infamy, which is a terrible boss wave. It's actually It actually used to be a boss wave that uh, that came up in Boss Rush every single time, because in the original, original release of Rebirth, all the Boss Rush waves were static. Like, they were the same waves every single time, instead of being randomized like they are now. I think it's better as it is now. Uh, I'm actually not... Well, I can actually afford to at least look at the deal with the Devil Wave. Look at the deal with the Devil, I should say. I was kind of tempted not to fight this, because obviously my HP is not in a great spot, but like I said, Gimpy kind of helps to mitigate that some. Actually, it, it mitigates it like entirely, so... There we go. For this floor, anyway, it mitigates it. Alright, good stuff. Let's go ahead and check our deal, just in case it's, like, Krampus or something. It's not Krampus, but it's, uh, pretty decent, all things told. Cursed Eye, no thanks. I'm not about to throw this run in the turtle just like that. So we got up to 18 cents here, my lucky number. Good sign, good sign. And anything else we can really do here? I mean, I could play the slot machine for all of that might be worth, but... And it honestly might be worth a little bit, but I have zero luck, so... Not feeling it super muchly. Super muchly. I knew that would sound dumb as I said it, and I said it anyway, just because I want to fit in with the cool kids who have a lesser vocabulary than mine. They don't use words like proliferate. <laughs> Alright. Let's deal with this. Get a little more money to donate. The nickel's very appreciated, actually. Now, what you want to do, I think, is try and get through as much of the first phase of Omega Greed as uh, as possible without popping algae's well obviously we don't want to pop algae's we want to use blank card before we do that and then we can always always use algae's after the fact if we need to 
but regardless, I'd, I'd like to save both of those eventualities for the second phase of the fight here. Especially because it's been so goddamn long since I fought the second phase of this fight that I'm gonna I'm gonna be rusty. I remember his attacks for the most part, I think. We got double nickels here. Let's go. We got so much money up here too, and there's there's a butt penny over there. Why not? <laughs> I don't have any other trinket. That's weird. I don't have a trinket at this point in the game, but. I was given the option for belly button, so I guess that's my own fault. So we are. We're not like tearing him a new asshole or anything, not as much as we were on the previous video, that's for sure. But we are doing respectable damage here. Haven't taken too much any damage ourselves either, so that's totally fine. Because the less damage we take here, the more money we can theoretically donate. Yeah, I remember most of uh, Omega Greed's attacks. I also remember that most of that pretty much every shot that he shoots explodes. In fact, I think literally every shot that he shoots explodes. So you need to watch out for that. That's why I like things like uh, Pyromaniac and Host Hat and shit like that that makes you immune to explosions is oftentimes very good in this fight. But we'll make do without it. There's another nickel. Dude, we're up to 45. We came in here with 18 cents. Came down to this floor with 18 cents anyway. And we're up to 40 fucking 5. That's actually ridiculous. Alright, 43, 43. Don't get cocky, kid. Is that a Star Wars-ism? I think it is. Alright, get rid of these keys. Almost, man. Almost managed to get rid of all the keys there. Go ahead and try and end this off. Okay, that's not so bad. Honestly, like, the more minions that he spawns like this, the better it is for us a lot of the time. So maybe you don't even worry about the keys so much. Because every minion that we kill gives us a chance at having another uh, another half red heart on the ground, which is great. Because it helps us ensure more survivability. It doesn't make us immortal, but we do have a lot of potential HP here. We have a lot of effective HP on this run. As long as we can dodge in the right directions towards these hearts, you know? So we're almost through the first phase here. Which, which would normally mean that we're almost done with this run, because I'm so used to greed mode, but... Not just yet. Don't count your chickens yet, buddy. Buckaroonie. So watch out for the brimstone lasers from the doors. That much I do remember. Now. Those shots are all gonna explode, as well as those, as well as those. My god. Okay, he's, uh... He's not messing around today. So you know what? I'm not going to mess around either. I'm going to blank card Alges. We're just right off the bat here. And just see how much damage I can get in. Just stand like up in his face. Get the cute meat action going as well. As much as you can, man. And then just once once I start taking damage, that's that's when I know that I need to uh, need to get out. Let's grab this money, actually. As much as we can. Try and focus on him as well. He seems to be, like, spawning money somehow, too, which I don't know how that's necessarily working. Maybe sometimes his coins that he drops drop money. Uh, okay, our Alge's rune is wearing out. So get back on out of there. Um, we do still have... We still have plenty of money to donate, not as much as we did once have. But enough to make me happy if we can donate, like, at least 40 cents. I'd be pretty stoked about that. And we still have the Alge's rune itself that we can uh, that we can pop here, so don't get too caught up about that. I also do remember not to, like when he jumps like that, don't dodge into where he stood before. Dodge away in a different direction. As often as you can, anyway. Yeah, it does seem that like his bomb coins oftentimes actually drop money, so that's pretty solid. Oh, dude! I didn't even realize we got this win like in the fucking bag with the habit here. We've created like an unstoppable combination. Provided that we still have, like, red hearts from Gimpy on the ground, which admittedly, those red hearts are not going to spawn anymore because they didn't have any more minions, but it's it's going to last us the rest of this fight. Because what I can do is I've used Blank Heart again here, then I can just use Algae's itself, and we're pretty much set for the rest of the fight. I don't think he can touch us. So, unknowingly, I didn't even realize, I, I just, like, totally forgot about the habit and the, its potential use case here. You know what, I'm happy that it uh, came into play here. Not that we were necessarily in a dire spot, specifically thanks to Gimpy. But he is on the ropes here. Should be done in no time. Yes, invincibility on this fight is just way too powerful, apparently. There we go. 
We're up to 45, 46 cents. The D1 has appeared. Buddy Baby has appeared in the basement, which I don't I don't remember unlocking like Buddy Baby or anything like that. Like I think there's may, may have been some new unlocks or something added for like a uh, for like doing every single thing with the character because I got that for Azazel as well and I didn't remember it. There was like a random baby that unlocked. I think there's still just like co-op babies, but they're cool. I rarely ever see the co-op babies anymore, except now in the form of a buddy in a box. So, I mean, that's kind of neat that I can see it in single player. Are we going to get up to 666? Is something an unlock there? We got store key figures, man. All right. Hopefully be able to donate all this. We have a 1% chance of this machine breaking right now, so... Oh no. I mean, 1% over like 50 cents is actually not that uh, insignificant, but there we go. We managed to get it all in. No more money on the ground. Let's end this off, dude. Good times were had by all. Not the most powerful run I've ever had, but you know what? Turned into a bit of a... Like, powerful in a different sense of the word, I guess. Regardless, that's everything done as Isaac. So, there you go. The titular character has been completed. Next time, we'll move on to greedier mode with Magdalene, and then we'll just go down the line here, as we have in the past. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please leave a like and or comment down below. It really helps out the channel. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more. I post a single Isaac video every day at noon Mountain Time. So, uh, join me tomorrow for the next one, if you would. I'm going to get out of here now, though, so have yourselves a good day. This is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you and good night.